We've all heard of the Raspberry Pi. It's a single board computer and about a, well, a little more than a year ago they released the Raspberry Pi 4. Mm -hmm. And the Raspberry Pi 4 is kind of a revolutionary addition to, um, to the lineup because up until the Raspberry Pi 4, Raspberry Pi was a great tinkering board. It was something that's a lot of fun for makers and tinkerers and, and you know people that just want to get their hands wet as far as setting up a, a single board computer. I still have my retro gaming on it. Hey, there you go. Retro Pi does retro very, Pi very well. Phenomenal. Yeah. Um, but with the Raspberry Pi 4, of course, it brought it into more of a, hey, this is almost as good as a you know entry level desktop computer mm -hmm. on a single board computer. So with that said, if you can use a single board computer in place of a desktop computer, what's next? Right? So you could do that. And I want to, you know, I want to be brutally honest with you. I mean, it, it's a single board computer still through and through. Absolutely. But we're talking like it might have four or eight gigs of RAM, which is really good for a single board computer. It's, it um, makes for a decent, like, Office processor. It, that's exactly right. Yeah, like if you're just using it to, to get online, do your Facebook and do your social media. It's phenomenal. Watch the occasional video online. It's good for that too, as long as you've got the right setup. Yeah. Um, but I think that's where people get hung up with these types of boards is that they're not built for multimedia, or at least they're not well support. At least there's not a great deal of support for multimedia yet. Correct. You talk about retro gaming, and retro gaming does really, really well because it's based on technology from 10, 15 years ago. That's right. So it does very well on a Raspberry Pi, but yes. it hasn't caught up to things like, like you're not going to get really good performing video. Although, that said, the Raspberry Pi 4 does have some really incredible specifications, including dual 4K 60p video output, yep. micro HDMI granted. Right. So, you know, but that's... I mean, it even does well with photo graphics. Like I've got GIMP yeah. on my Raspberry Pi. There you go. Yeah. And it works great for that. As long as you don't exceed the amount of RAM. So a well, Raspberry yeah. Pi, the earlier gens that had only one gig of RAM, yeah. you may have trouble if you open a 30 gig <laughs> file, <laughs> right? right? Like you're not going to be doing video editing in 4K, that's yeah. for sure. But yeah, GIMP doing some JPEG work or something totally like that. Works. Why not? Absolutely. Yeah. So now the natural evolution of that kind of desktop idea, taking a Raspberry Pi single board computer and turning it into a desktop computer has evolved into what's called the Raspberry Pi 400. So it is a Raspberry Pi 4 at its heart. It's been, you know, the, they've rearranged the board in order to make it fit within this chassis. Right. And, you know, it, it takes me back to the kind of mid 80s, um, I guess when I had a VIC-20, which was a keyboard yes. computer. That's and, right. And, and like that was one of my first computers. And wow. you know, you think about the Amiga, the Commodores, and yeah. those things that we grew up with are kind of, you know, people have wanted that. There have been projects where people can 3D print their own Raspberry Pi keyboard case and things like that. But now it's official, it's sleek, it's, incredible. It's a little bit um, gimmicky in a way, but yeah, if you, you look want, past that. I think so. I think so. We're going to kind of figure that out together tonight. Um, if you're into that like really sleek form factor, it is literally a keyboard that is the computer. If you don't mind the fact that it's got some cables coming out of it and, uh, and you've got to set a monitor up, then you're going to do just fine with this. But it's not like the Raspberry Pi that you'll stick on the back of a TV and it just operates hidden away. This is going to be on your desk. Do you remember the desk in your garage that you were turning into a computer? I remember that. This is like that, but smaller. This is a lot sleeker. <laughs> that desk so was So I had huge. taken a, a big old oak desk and uh, converted it into a full ATX computer. Yeah. Yeah, back in the day. I was that, so jealous of that desk. That was pretty cool. When it we was used cool. to do LAN parties and stuff, Unreal Tournament Good on times. a desk. Good times. But let's get into the box. I want to take a look at this and see what we have with the Raspberry Pi 400. First thing we're going to see is da, 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 the Raspberry Pi 400. So that is a Raspberry Pi 4 single board computer with 4 gigs of RAM ready to go built in to the keyboard. It's just like the Raspberry Pi keyboard. Now I've got the ANSI edition, so US keyboard layout. 
Uh, let's take a look at the back here. We've got full-size GPIO. Wow. Labeled with pins 1 and 40. We've got micro SD, dual HDMI output, USB-C for the power, dual uh, USB 3 and a USB 2, and Ethernet gigabit, and a Kensington lock. So, and yes, oh. that, and that is uh, gigabit Ethernet. Yeah, you need a Ke Kensington lock on your Raspberry Pi. Come on. <laughs> Just another cable to have. Uh, all right. It also, this is the kit, of course. So it comes with some extra things to get you up and going. Comes with the official Raspberry Pi mouse. There it is. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a pretty generic cheap mouse. I wish it, I wish it was wireless, to be honest with you. I think that would have been a lot better for them to do that, but hey, I agree. it came with it. Uh, we got the power supply, USB-C, uh, and that, of course, uh, is 5.1 volts, 3 amps, and that's going to power this bad boy. We've got a SD card to micro SD adapter. I guess the SD card, yeah, that, it's actually in the Raspberry Pi 400. Oh, okay. So presumably that is ready to boot. Further in the box, ah, we've got a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. I love that. So we don't have a bunch of dongles and adapters hanging out the back of it. It is just a nice little sleek cable. Uh, and it came with this beginner's guide as well, which is, you know, a wow. good $15 book right there uh, included, which has got tons of projects for the kids. If you want to get into some STEM stuff, um, some fun projects to get you up and going and, and doing some maker tech, um, this is a, a, a pretty incredible addition, really. I mean, you typically want to buy that separately. So nice that it came with it anyways. Yeah. There you go. So love the keyboard layout. It does not feel like a, a bad keyboard at all. I mean, it, it, they're pretty low profile keys. You're not look, looking at a mechanical keyboard. It's more like a kind of like a laptop keyboard or something like that. Yeah, but they're not clunky, which is nice. Yeah. The cooling on the bottom there is uh, quite significant. Uh, there's a really large heat sink in there that's keeping the thing cool. So they've overclocked it to 1.8 gigahertz out of the box. Oh, cool. Uh, which is lovely. And as you can see, just sleek form factor. So it's even smaller than my VIC-20, but super, <laughs> super powerful. And what, I, I, it's, not, it it's not that thick either, which is No, nice. that's what I mean. Like sleek form factor, just great. Eh? I would have thought, because I mean, you're used to the Raspberry Pi, you know, it sits up that high. I thought it was going to be a much bigger keyboard, but no, they've really, no. they've really shrunk it down. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, just like a Raspberry Pi 4, you've got Bluetooth 5, you've got your uh, Wi-Fi, gigabit Ethernet. Um, I'm going to be using it on Wi-Fi today. Um, and it just fires right up and ready to go. So should we do that? Absolutely. Let's fire it up. Well, here we are. Raspberry Pi OS came pre-installed. Um, at first boot, I had to just kind of go through the initial setup process, which just got its updates and things like that. Um, I'm going to connect to my, you know, I, I can connect to Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is working out of the box. Um, everything just kind of works just like a Raspberry Pi. What does it come with? I mean, you've got everything that comes on a Raspberry Pi OS. Games. Noise. Minecraft Pi, Boing, Bunner. So what's the performance like? Oh, there we go. Oh, that was quick. Oh, oh, that you, was quick. You, yeah. you are not good at that. <laughs> not very good at that. Um, that's okay. So, I mean, performance-wise, it's a Raspberry Pi 4. It performs really great. It's, uh, it's all running from this little keyboard. So what do I have? I've got the uh, mouse cable, I've got power, and I've got HDMI output going to the TV. And that's all there is to it. So um, the SD card that came in it, again, came pre-installed with this operating system, ready to go overclock to 1.8 gigahertz. Um, I would rather have seen them put in better SD cards, truthfully. Um, so I actually, I grabbed myself a Kingston Endurance card. I think because Raspberry Pis are known to eat micro SD cards for dinner. Um, I want something that's going to be a little more, um, you know, long life, better for this kind of thing. So I'm going to shut this down because 
I'm probably not going to want to personally run Raspberry Pi OS on here. I want to run Ubuntu because now Ubuntu is officially supported on the Raspberry Pi 4. This being a Raspberry Pi 4, it, at its heart, it should run pretty well. We got four gigs of RAM and uh, I've already pre-installed Ubuntu 12.10 from Ubuntu.com. It's now officially downloadable as an image file from their website. If you click on downloads, you're going to see under uh, IoT, Raspberry Pi is the first in the list. Um, so we're going to shut her down, take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be booted into Ubuntu 20.10. Stick around. Welcome back. So we are booted into Ubuntu 20.10 on the Raspberry Pi 400. So this keyboard is all that I need in order to be up and running with a full computer. And here we go. Out of the box, it's got Firefox and uh, let's bring it up. I have, you know, I've tested a few things just to see how things work. I've connected it to the TV at home just to see, you know, are the videos going to work and things like that. Let's make sure that I have internet because I should have yeah I've already got I've already set up my Wi-Fi which is configurable just like on Ubuntu you just go to your Wi-Fi settings here and select your network and there you go enter your password and you're in um, let's jump on to YouTube because I mean the the question that always comes up is immediately how does it handle multimedia we know that it's got your office suite we've got LibreOffice writer LibreOffice, the suite already pre-installed with Ubuntu. Um, so if I click on that, there we go, LibreOffice Writer, just like you would expect. So, I mean, that's never a question. Is Office going to work? Yeah, it's going to work out of the box. But what about things like YouTube? So let's go to linuxtechshow.com, which is going to reroute to our Linux Tech Show uh, channel on YouTube. Make sure you give us a subscribe. And here we go. Let's click on Becca's news from last week. And everything seems to load pretty well. The ads work, so that's good. Now I'm monetizing this, so this is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Video will play after ad. This is great TV. So if you got an ad while you're watching this, and now you're watching me watch an ad. We basically just doubled our monetization this week. So that's been <laughs> fantastic. Uh, OK, so there's Becca in a YouTube video. Let's bring it up full screen and see how that performs, because that's usually problematic on these kinds of setups. But as you can see, out of the box in Firefox, it's working fantastic. Uh, frame rate seems OK. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how to gauge that beyond what I see, and it, it looks fine. Yeah, looking uh, smooth. Yeah. So YouTube works. The other thing that I wanted to know is, was Plex going to work? So, and I don't know if I'm going to have access to it from here, because as I mentioned, I was able to access it from my home TV. And I'll just say, uh, out of the box, Plex did not work. So it said that there was some kind of error or something missing. And I got into some forums, and I, and I started looking through and somebody suggested, oh, just install the VLC package. And I'm like, just like everyone else in the thread, they're like, how does that impact Plex? Because VLC is a video player, but it has nothing at all to do with Plex. Well, it turns out, so I just did an apt install Plex, or pardon me, uh, VLC. And uh, having installed VLC, it brought in all these codecs and everything else that come with VLC and Plex worked at that point. So everything worked absolutely flawlessly. So now we're able to watch things. And in fact, I was able to decode H.265 video on Plex. Oh, nice. Which was fantastic, because even my, my computer that's connected to the TV at home has a great deal of trouble with H.265. Um, H.265 is very resource intensive. I prefer to keep my media at H.264. So just keep in mind, if you're looking for the best performance on this, you're probably going to want to stick with H.264, but it did play H.265. I'd probably go with Ethernet, though, because as you know, Wi-Fi with H.265 is probably going to have some hiccups. 
um, that works great. The one thing that I have not yet got to work, Jeff and, and community, is Netflix because the version of Firefox that comes with this does not support DRM on and Netflix requires that. So there are packages and you get into the forums on the Raspberry Pi uh, because remember this is a Raspberry Pi 4, right? So lots of people have already put work into it and there are installers which I haven't tried yet but the forum threads say that hey you can install this script and it will, um, it will get you up and running with a version of Chrome that is built for uh, DRM. So then you can use things like Netflix, which require that. So everything works pretty good out of the box. Pretty nice, right? Yeah. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, you know, is this a gaming system? No. Is this a multimedia system? No, not really. Um, but I'll say we use um, an Android box at home for our TV, and I disconnected that and plugged this in in its place and this was performing better than our one-year-old uh, oh, really? Android box. Yeah, so for multimedia even, it was doing a better job than the Android box and I think that the the family can really appreciate it a little more because uh, the form, like the kind of the, the way that it, the I guess the desktop paradigm is more like a computer than an Android TV. So you're actually using an interface that where you're bringing up a browser and you're able to install applications and Linux software and things like that. So it is a really robust system. Works great. Um, I mean, that's that's really all there is to it, right? Like, does it work? Yeah. It is a Raspberry Pi 4, though. So if I was going to use this as a set-top box, I would just go with a Raspberry Pi 4, right. overclock it to 1.8 gigahertz to, to match the speed of this. Um, and, and that's not really a selling point. Remember that overclocking can be done anyways. So whether you have a Raspberry Pi 4 at 1.5 gigahertz or a Raspberry Pi 400 at, at 1.8, it looks like a selling p feature on paper, but it's just a setting in the operating system. So you can take that Raspberry Pi 4 and bump it up to 1.8 as well. So uh, pretty clever marketing, I must say, because those who don't understand how overclocking works will think this is faster. Well, it's not. Uh, it's the exact same uh, SOC. So all right, let's jump back over. So I mean, all in all, I'm pretty impressed with it. I yeah. like it. As I mentioned, it's a little bit on the gimmicky side, but I'm old school, and I like that kind of a gimmick. Well, and I mean, for, for me, like I'm looking at that and I'm going, that would make, especially with this, you know, manual, Yeah. that would make a great Christmas gift yeah. for the kids because like our, our, especially with, you know, one of my boys who really wants to get into programming. Mm -hmm. Savannah has been doing that for a couple of years, going back to that, uh, the Siggy that she had, yep. uh, from smart girls. Yeah. This is a robot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I mean, something like that, that would be cool. You know, yeah. buy them a monitor and a, and a, you know, the, the Raspberry Pi Yeah, just connect it to the TV. Well, yeah, you can do and, that and too. And that's the nice thing too, is that it, because of the form factor, you can just disconnect it and put it away when you're not using it, pull it out, put it on the on the TV, whatever you want to do. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's uh, it's definitely got its place. Yes. Um, is it for you? That's really, you know, it's a case by case thing. So, uh, but I've taken a look at it. I like it. Um, I think it's it's actually making a really nice kiosk here at the studio. I think yeah. we, we may just Great. keep it set up. Um, pretty fantastic. So check it out. It's the Raspberry Pi 400. I'll post links below for you and uh, follow those um, and I'll, uh, that will probably kick back a little bit to help the show, but otherwise just, you know, grab yourself one in time for Christmas if you think it would make a great gift. A reminder that you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash category five. Great way to support the content that we create. We give it away for free, but if you've got means to support that free content, it means the world to us and it allows us, it gives us the resources that we need in order to keep this thing going and get stronger and stronger every week. So we appreciate and thank you very much for your support. Mm -hmm. Have a great week, everybody. See ya. Bye.